Welcome to part one. Let's continue where we left off. So we were talking about the two devices and how they communicate and everything, right? So now we remember each device has its own socket. So we need to keep keep that in mind. Okay, so I made a mistake again here. This should be comp comp, comp a a I accept, right? So they accept the connection because the server needs to accept the connection in order for the connection to establish. So we have this, and then that's pretty much that. Let's start coding, right? So let's start creating the classes. Um, okay, before I create the class, we, we know that we're going to need uh, to design the GUI, right? We need the GUI. So let me let's read the problem statement and see what exactly is needed in the GUI. So we need input fields, right? We need a label for the name and password because you see the user will provide the name and password for login. Then we compare those details from the file. So we, that means we need to read from the file. Read from the file, compare if those those details that they've entered they match with the details that are stored in the file. So we're gonna use a scanner for that to just scan that line, and then we can use this uh, the regular the string tokenizer, or we can use um, a split method to split into multiple strings. That's there's many ways to solve it. And then evo 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 list right? It returns a list of image files. So we need to have a list. So I need to have a set of images, right? So remember this is, I'm doing it in my own way. So let me just do this, just, just in case I close this tab by mistake. Let me save the image as a PNG. And then I'm just gonna call it diagram. And then, Pick a folder. Okay, it's preventing me from doing that. Um, let me just say download it. Okay, there we go. So there's the image, right? So that's fine. Um, let's continue. So we need to design, right? So the design is based since since I don't have the okay let me create an empty application since I do not have a I use scene builder for planning you 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 realize how effective it is I'll show you just I'll you see when we start coding because I need the measurements and all those things all those things that I need whether I'm using a grid grid pane or an anchor pane or v box h box whatever doesn't matter what what technique you use that's up to you as long as in the tech in the pdf they don't tell you what to use you see they didn't say anything they just say just create your gui add a pane layout that may be used for your event so that, that doesn't really matter they don't care how you do it so me i'm just going to design it based on intuition so we need greetings that means we need a label and a text field so before it do that, I need to create a, an anchor pane. I, I like to use an anchor pane because I can place the things anywhere. I don't need to say go to row one, row two. I don't like that. I don't, personally, I don't like that. You could do that, it's easier. I don't know if you'd be allowed to use this because they know about it and then they're also the only one that don't allow. I don't know if it, for you guys, they might allow. So I'll make mine's width to be 700. The height maybe let's see 600 okay a little bit too big for my screen 500 yeah so 700 by 500 all of these details will be will be typed in code that's why i use this design so that i know how big it's going to be i know the exact measurements so let me make it 550 okay let me let me do preview to see how it's going to look when it runs mm. Okay, my screen is a bit bigger, so I can make it 600. And then I can make it a bit wider. Let me see, 800. 
let me just preview. Yeah, so when it runs, it's going to be, yeah, this is going, which is big, yeah. Just that on here, it, it doesn't display well, right? Okay. But then it's fine. We'll work with that. Well, like I, I have a small resolution. I have a small screen. So I'm going to need the first thing, label. So I'm going to drag, drag and drop the label. And then I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Yeah, I'm going to make the label a bit bigger. But then before I do that, I need to change the text size. So let's say the text size is 18. Yeah, I think 18 should be fine. 18 pixels, yeah. So the text size should be 18 pixels. I'm going to copy the same label, put it down there. So this label will be called um, name, right, for the user's name. And then this one will be called, let me see. I like to also put colors. You don't have to. Remember, you don't have to. You, also, you don't have this time, this luxury. So I'll do that color pal palette. And then I'm going to open color hunt. I want the pink color. You could, I could use orange. Let me see, orange and black. Yeah, that would be fire. Yeah, orange and black. So orange, that combo goes well. So orange and black. Um, I like the shade of orange. So I copy that hexadecimal value. I use that for my design. So how do I do, how do I set the color? It's simple, you use style, style sheets, right? You say background color. You can also put a, back, a background image, that's fine. And then that's the background color, and then date is. Okay, I'll make it black and uh, orange and white. This shade of orange is, is a bit too dark. Mm, this one, I think this one should suffice. That one is a bit too dark. Yeah, this is a bit better. So that means this one, I have to make it white. And then white, I know it's two, it's Fs, two, four, six. So six Fs, I know that's going to be white. And then here, two, four, six Fs. And then it's going to be the password. Come on, password. Right, and then it's going to be like this. Uh, but then I need to put that colon there. So this, this will represent the password, right? And then I'm going to have a text field. So text field, because I want to get text from the user, obviously. And then I'm gonna enlarge it a bit. Okay, this is, I hope my diagram doesn't become too long. Okay, the way I'm going to structure it, yeah, I'm going to make sure it, it reaches there to the end because I want my things to be aligned, right? So I'm going to copy this text field again and put it here. There we go. This is perfect. It, it is aligned. But then... I have, I have I have no choice but to make it a bit longer. Okay, it's fine. Let me let me ex expand the text. Let me say enter your name. Let me write it in full, just so that I can make it a bit. It looks a bit better when the text is longer. Oh, I can, let me see, I can put it, that's too far. Yeah, so I have to, I have no choice but to put it starting exactly where it should start. And then this one will say, enter your password, right? This is where you enter your password. There we go. And then they need to be aligned, right? Enter your name, enter your password. I don't know if this is, I don't like that space there. I might make it a bit smaller or in, make this, I think I can just make them long. This point, uh, I don't have a choice. Then make them a bit long. And then the text size for each 
text field, I'm going to increase it to 14. Um, let me see. If I say 15, how big is that? Is that? So let me show in preview and try to type. Yeah, 15 is fine. Yeah, 15. So I need to make it 15 pixels. All of these settings, I need to put them when I'm coding for each field, for each thing, for each label, the size, all those things. You see how I do it. Okay. Maybe I can choose, let me see. But then orange is fine. I'm, I'm just thinking about making it pink. But then orange is not bad also. So let's, let's do this. Let's make it a bit appealing. Hmm. Not really my style. Let me see. What shade of pink can I put here? Will this one suffice? Yeah, you don't have to do all of this, right? I'm just putting, okay, this is not bad. Yeah. Yeah, this is not bad. Yeah, so I'll make the, the, okay, it's not bad, but then the white is kind of like, sort of like blurry like sort of like it's it's it's, it's fading out so yeah this is the one yeah you see the the, the 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 text is visible so i would choose this one and then i'm gonna need obviously need a button here so i'll see it seems like i might not have enough space but then i'll see let me see in preview so yeah so far so good but then, it's, like I said, it seems, seems like I'm not going to have space since it looks big. And that's fine. Let's, we'll, we'll, we'll get to, we'll handle that when we get to that road. So, and I'm going to, it returns a list of images. And then evolve, get, return a response message followed by the requested message to the client. And then the server should validate ID evolve by blah, 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 sharp. Okay, I, I'm i seeing, seems like we're going to need a lot. So we're going to need a connect button, right, to log in. Or, or just call it login, since they said if the login was successful. So I'm going to need to add a button. So button here, obviously, it needs to be as wide as this, and then And then that's it. And then I need to, let me make it a bit smaller. Mm, yeah. And then I need to choose a color for the buttons, which is, it should be a darker shade of that to make it a bit beautiful. Yeah. So I'm gonna choose a darker shade of pink and then set the background color for my button to that darker. Okay, it's not going as I expected. Or maybe I need to do it vice versa. Let me do the background for the, the, the background to be that, and then the buttons to be bright. Yeah, I think I can do that. Or oh, it needs to be lighter than this. So let me do this. Hmm. Let me preview. I still fine, but then it's also not fine. So I need to choose a light, like a light color, a light pink. So let me see this. I need to go back to that light, light pink. And then let me see, does it match better when it's on the button? Oh, okay, yeah, I think this should be better. Yeah, this is better. And then this text, the button text size, the button should say log in. And then this will be 15. The size should be 15. The text color should be white. So hash two, four, six. So it's going to be that. And then there we go. 
And then we need to get responses from the server. And we need to output the responses. So this is just planning, right? We all we're doing is planning, designing our image. So evolve list, right? It needs to return a list of images. The server retrieves the list of images from the image list.txt. So the, the file should be called image list.txt. I will create the image and then put in a list of all the images. I can come up with my own images, that's fine. And then I'm gonna have uh, to, that means I need, I need to have a, what is, what is that thing called, text area. But then before I do that, I need a label. I need two labels, as a matter of fact. I need two, one here that says um, list, come on, list of images, right? Which is going to return a list of images and display them. And then the other the other one should be the other one should be what a response from server yeah so the other one should be response from server so this would be um, server response I can just call it server response server response i need to enlarge it so that the text is visible so i'm going to have two things i'm going to log in i'm going to have list of images and a server response so i'm going to need a text area on both sides so text area i don't know whether i should put it at the bottom but i'll see i'll plan as i go because I feel like something is still not right. Remember, there's not going to be a lot of images. But then I need to give it a bigger size, right? So let me, the text size for this text area. So let's make it, okay, does it, I think the bigger it is, the more problematic it will be. But it depends on the name of my images. So I'm going to say 15 pixels wide, right? That would be the text size. Yeah, you see, I'm not going to have enough space. So I need to make a plan on how to plan this properly. So it needs to return. And then I need to also get which um, gets the requested image. So I need a text field and label again for that. So before I do that, I need to, yeah, this is, they go, there's a lot that goes into planning. Eh? So I need to create a button for getting I think it's in that order. You start by creating, and then there's a get list to get the list of images. So I need to have a button that gets the list of images. I'm gonna call it, I can call it list, right? Yeah, but then I don't want to be vague. I'm gonna call it get list of images, get list of images. So the user knows what this button does, get list of images. This will get the list of images, and then those images, those list of images, after display, after getting them, they should be displayed inside this text area. That text area with that label. So, like I said, it seems like the space is not going to be enough here. So I need to tweak it, tweak it a bit. So there we go, and then move this up. Move this up. Okay, that's fine. And then move this button up. And then move that other button up. And then move this up. And then move it, this text area up. So this will display the list of images. And then this will be the server's response the whole time if everything gets executed. So this will be the server's response here. Every time the the every time we communicate with the server, and obviously when we communicate with the server, we need to get back a response. So we have that. So there's the 
design right it's looking cute it's giving it's very dim, demure very mindful so let me go back to my design so we need an evolve to get the id so we also, we also need to be able to get the id so that means i need a label and a text field again so quite a lot of things involved here which will help us get the image that means you need to have another design another another paint another pain right to display only the image that we've received so which is fine so i'll be left with this and then the server should validate the id and return an error message if the id is not valid blah 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 the file should then be read in and transmitted to the client and then there should be an evolve by when the client logs off and then we're missing that the label and the text field so copy this label then i'm going to put it down there and then i'm going to copy this text field put it down there so there we go and then this will say enter enter your id enter enter the file id enter the file id right because we need to get the file with an id number like is it the first file file number one file number two and how will the user know because it will be displayed here that's how the user knows so that means i can make enlarge this a bit because i need also to have a button that gets the image so this button gets a list of images and then this one will get that one image right so yeah that's that's the difference between the two and then after getting the image we need to see the responses the server's response that's why i need a text field thing a text area and remember this becomes scrollable the more content you have the more text that's going to be in there so it doesn't matter how big i make it so that's fine and then this will help us get the image right i, I should call this one get image after you've entered this and you can structure it you can put numbers next to the button so that the user it's easy for the assistant or the user of your app to know in what order to click the buttons because if the buttons are clicked in the wrong order there's going to be issues so three dot get image and then it gets the image and then i'm going to need a button to display the image right so this this should be able to display the image so four so this will be number four okay nope so this will be number four which should be display image this should open another scene right i'll set it up to open another scene so that we can view that other image the image i mean yeah it's looking cute it's, it's very cute so i'm going to move the shift the buttons shift the things around so that there's a bit of space in here, right here. so i'm gonna scroll down and then there we go yeah you need scene builder to make sure your things are aligned they're in the right place so you know so that you know the measurements you could also use a grid pane that's up to you like row what column what that's also fine so there's everything right you're going to click to log in get a list of images which is going to display here remember the whole time the server response is showing we're seeing the response from the server and then here then here get we click the image after entering and then we display the image we should open another pane we will come up with other pain, right? And then that's pretty much the design. Let me see if I can do this. Mm. Okay, show all. Okay, that's fine. So that's pretty much all we needed to. We need to have here. We need to create another. Like I said, we need to create another. Another design, right? For 
the image for displaying the image remember to display the image we use image view so i will save my file and call it um client pane um my my pane let me call it pane and then i'm going to save it on the downloads folder it's going to be an fxml document it saves it in fxml so save with fxml you could import it directly that's how powerful java is just that they don't want you to do that that's that's a shortcut that's not allowed you have to so i just have to type everything from scratch the rows like how, how big the everything the text everything i have to type from scratch but then you see that it's going to come out looking exactly the way it look, looks here because i will have the measurements so we have our design up and ready then let's say the classes that we need so the classes that we're going to need a graphic design company called evolve way has tasked you to develop a networked client application and a server application so we have two applications the, the application is a basic image downloader which makes use of the evolve protocol the evolve protocol requires clients to log into the server before other commands can be processed. The user keeps track of the available image files by storing each image file and corresponding ID in a text file. As you can see, we need that text file. Before I forget, we need this text file. And then the images, we also need the images. So it, remember everything is that is dealing, that's, that deals with, um, with files right i don't know why it's not allowing me to do this this thing is really annoying and it's fine so clear no i don't i want to change i want to move out of this folder and then move into the eclipse workspace folder into that folder and then move into the data folder and then i'm going to create a file named image list dot txt right that's how you create a file in via the terminal in 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 linux you say touch so if i list here i will have all the file the file created there i don't know why it's not when i right click it's not allowing me to create a new file don't know why it's doing that so that's how I'm doing it the old way. So I need to have a list of images. So in order to have a list of images, I need the actual images, right? So let's choose the images. I'm gonna choose randomly. I'm gonna be the most random person ever. I'll choose, let's say for example, Elon Musk's image, right? Um, let me pick one here. Uh, da, 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 da. okay i think this one yeah i think this one should be fine let's see if i can download it save image as okay it, it doesn't want to download yeah it, it, it's a it's in a different form it needs to be png or jpeg so let's try this one yeah jpeg so there's the image we can download so i need to go to my home go to eclipse workspace go to my project go to data folder where we put the data that we're going to work with in our practical right i'll call this one elon and then i'm gonna download another image let me think mm. Okay, let me download Nicola Tesla image, right? So Nicola Tesla, Mr. Tesla. Um, okay, this one. Okay, the list JPEG. So this will be Tesla. That's the first image. That's the second image. And then the last one. Let me think. 
this one should be a very random. Let me say Oster. Oster from Black Clover. So Oster. Then there's there's Oster. I think this one should be fine. Okay, it doesn't want. Um let me see. Let me talk about this one. Still web P. Oh, I don't want web P. What about this one? Still web P. Mm, come on. Look, can, can't even find an image to download now. That's okay. Let's try this one. Okay, it seems too small. Okay, let me let me search. Let me just search an artist. Let me make it simple. Let me search Iniko. And then save image. Finally, so Iniko, save the image, and then that's those are the images we're gonna work with. So I'm gonna go to my folder. And then the image list, the TXT, I need to give it, I need to put an index number, right? So image number one will be, because I said it is an, an ID, which is what what number, and then followed by the image name. So we'll start with Elon.jpg. So Elon.jpg. Then number two will be Tesla. I need to check the extension dot JPEG, J-P-E-G dot jpeg and then number three is um iniko dot jpeg again if i'm not mistaken yeah dot jpeg and then control s to save everything inside the image list dot file the txt i mean and then we close the file so now if i go back into my eclipse remember i'm making changes in my folder not inside Eclipse. So I need to come to Eclipse, right click on my project and say refresh. It's gonna have all those folders, folders that I've generated, even the images. There's everything. There's the image.txt file with the names. And then there's the images, Iniko, Elon and Tesla. So we have all the images. So now let's create the files. The, the, the files, right? So I'm going to start with my main. I'm going to call it client main. Remember, we're going to have a client main and a client server, a server main. So, and those, they shouldn't be inside any, remember, they shouldn't be inside any packages, right? So I'll call this one client main for my main client. And then you have a main method. If you forgot the main method, that's fine. It's a way to put the main method. So there's the client main. And then I right click and create a new class. Call this one server main. And then let's say I forgot to put the main method. And then I'm like, oops, I forgot the main method. How do I put it? You just type main in small letters. And then on your keyboard, you press control followed by backspace like this. And then it should show you the main method in my case. I don't know why it's not showing. Okay, yeah. So now it's showing it's main, and then control backspace, and then press enter to add that main method. So we have our main, and then now we can create the evolve classes, right? I don't know what it should be called, so let's just check. So create the server class, complete the server class, this class is responsible for binding to evolve port to listen to clients. The server must be able to handle multiple clients. This is the very important part. They must be able to handle multiple clients. That's very important. And then any clients who wish to connect are handled by evolve handler. So basically the server, okay, it's, it's actually called server class. Yeah, we have, yeah, they're actually called server and client. It's not client main, 
So let's rename them. So basically the class is with the main methods. This one is just called client. So refactor, I wanna rename it to just client and then finish. And then this one, I'll I need to refactor, rename it to main, to save, to serve, I mean, then I'll finish. So it has been renamed, which is fine. And then we need to create evolve handler, which, which handles incoming cli clients, right? Client connections. And remember, they said this should be able to handle any number of clients. So if you remember, multi-trading, this is where multi-trading comes in place. So whenever you run a, when you, whenever you run a Java application, right, it goes to the main method and then it creates a thread to run that main method, right? So that means when that main method is run, it's going to be run inside one thread. So how can we accept multiple clients within one thread, which becomes a problem. So we need to put in multi-trading. So how do I make it multi-trading? I just make I just have to make evolve handler as a task that can be run by a thread so that each every time this class is called right I can create a new thread for each interaction with that that one client so, so that if if you forgot threading that's, I don't want to make this video too long go go read the slides so I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna make this class evolve handler and it's going to be inside the package because this is for my it's a handler class, which is basically for the server side. So dot csc to be dot um, server. This is how you should create it. And then it's going to be a task, right? So it's going to implement runnable. So it's going to be a runnable class. It can be run as a task. So I'm going to tell it, I'm going to add an interface called runnable because it needs to implement runnable so that it can be it can be run as a task so that I can achieve multi-trading. And then any code that I that I want to run is going to be placed within the run method, which is the code for connect interacting with the user. That's that code with the client, I mean, for getting the image, logging in, all of the code should be here. So that's very important. And then if you complete the evolve handler, I don't have evolve handler. So registered users are created in the users. Okay. So you see the file is named users. Let me see if I called users. Yeah, I did call it users. So we're in the right track. And then I need to have an evolve client pane, which represents the GUI, right? And then the, cl the client pane, you know, how do you know which class it should extend? or inherit from it depends on the base the root the root node of your GUI my root node is basically anchor pane which is like the founding ancestor you can view it in terms of life science family trees it's like the the, the answer founding ancestor and then within anchor pane I have all these children right so basically the, in this case it just acts as like a parent like a base class anchor pane so therefore I need to extend, I need to say extends the anchor pane, extend from the anchor pane, anchor pane class. Since I used an anchor pane, you might have used a grid pane. So you need to extend from grid pane. If you've used grid, grid pane, you need to extend from grid pane. And then this is for my client. So I'm going to say client. And then I'm going to call it copy paste that name, evolve client pane. It shouldn't have a main method, but then it's super class now, or it's base class should be, um, what is this, anchor pane. So I should change this and say anchor pane. In my case, it's not gonna show because I haven't added JavaFX. So let me do that. Let me link, let me add JavaFX. So I'm gonna right click on my project name and then scroll down to build path and then scroll down to add libraries. That library that we created was a user library. So I'm gonna click on user library and then click finish or click next, I mean, and then click select the JavaFX, the way you've named it. I've named it JavaFX followed by the version and then click finish. So now I have JavaFX in my project. I think now it should pick it up when I try to inherit from anchor pane. 
so anchor pain exactly so there's anchor pain it now appears so i can press enter like this or you can just leave it and then just literally type it in your code and, and say extends that pain whatever pain you've used in your practical in your code so we have okay let me zoom in a bit so there's our code right so it's up to us what which class we start with it's honestly up to us the images the image files that are downloaded should be saved to disk so when you download the image you should save it from disk so what, what does that mean this means that the image is actually in the data folder we should have two folders so that we can you can understand what it means to download so in the data folder i'm going to have two folders the first folder will be my client representing my client my client data or the client folder and then the server should represent that information i don't know which one whether the client or the server has the image list but i'm not sure which one is which but then i know the images i know for a fact that all of them they need to be inside the server folder because that we need to get them from that server folder to our client folder, which is basically downloading. We call that downloading. But if it was vice versa, you are getting them from the client to the server, that means you are uploading. In the server, in terms of downloading and uploading, view the server folder is like a Dropbox or Google Drive. So obviously, if you're adding a, 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 a file to Google Drive, you are uploading the file. But then if you're getting it from, you call that downloading. So we are literally doing what we, this is the code that we're writing. That code, when you click Google Drive and you add images, this is the code that we have to, we're going to write here, which is very interesting if you, if you think about it. So users, um, the available users, I don't know which class, let's just double check. I think we can find out which folders to put things in when you know which class is going to implement what. So the following request commands are available in info. So it's going to request, well, I, I know for a fact that your details need to be saved on the server. So I'll just save it in the servers for in the servers folder. And then the server will compare to see that. And then the image list, I'll just save it as a client folder. And then close. So this is what we'll be working with, right? We pretty much have everything done. We have all the folders. Perfect. Let's start with anchor with our pain, right? Let's start by setting up our GUI. That's the main important thing. So we extended pain. So that means I can call the child classes from, I can call the, the functions from my super class, which is the anchor pain. So if you want to, you remember you can use the super keyword to refer to something inside your super class or your base class. I would, I would use super, you don't have to. I, I, I will use super to show you that where, where, where's, where's what coming from. So the first thing that I need to create is a constructor. And remember, Java doc is important. Evolve client pane. And then I don't know what it's going to take in at the moment. I'm not sure what it's going to take in the constructor. But I, excuse me, but I'm going to leave it as it is for now. I don't know what it's going to take in. And then I'm going to create a helper method, right? So helper method, meaning that it's private. So private void setup. It's going to call, be called setup GUI to set up our graphical user interface. And then that's pretty much that. And then I'm going to call it inside my constructor set up GUI to set up the GUI. So I need to set, you see this thing, it's very easy once you have this diagram. I don't want to lie, it's very easy once you have the diagram. So if you look at our, okay, I can't minimize the button, it's fine. If you look at our diagram, our uh, uh, GUI, right? We have anchor pane, which is that, that's anchor pane, and it has a background color. But then before we set the background colors and all that, let's give it a size. Let's set what's the size and then what's the width and the height. So as you can see, it's called pref width and pref, pref height, which means preferred width and preferred height. So I, there's a method called set preferred width and set preferred height. Straightforward. 
But then it's inside of my anchor plane class, class which is the base class. So remember, this extends, or it, it, it's, a, it's now a descendant of anchor plane. So whatever anchor plane has, evolve client plane now has. I can refer it to them just by just typing super dot set um, preferred width. And then the, the preferred width, we said it should be 800, right? Um, where's the, yeah, it should be 800 and then height is 600. And it expects a double, you can pass in an integer, that's fine. If you remember previous semester, we say that you can say dot zero and you can put a D there that letter that you can append a D to say that this is a double. Remember that in Java that's possible. If you remember, if you watch the videos that I uploaded previous previous semester, so set preferred height uh, to six hundred, right? So that's the that's that's the height width and the height. You see everything I'm just taking from my diagram. I'm just looking. Oh, this the and then I look at what is it called? It's called pref prefer prefer height. Okay, straightforward. And then that's pretty much all I have to do. Now I'm left with setting the back, the color for my anchor pane. So I have a style, you see it's called style. So you set the style. So I'm gonna go say, say super.set style, to still to set the style, right? And then the style, you set it exactly as you see it there. What is it called? It's called FX. You always put FX there to say that this is a Java FX styling, right? And then background color. So I need this background color. So copy this. If you watch the videos in the previous semester, this is not a problem. This is not going to be a problem at all. So minus FX minus and then background color. And then colon to set the background color, followed by the color. But then you need to put a hash symbol there because this is a this is an, this is a hexadecimal, right? So you need to put that hash to say take this hexadecimal value. So we have that. And then now what I need is, I can go to my client paint, to my client here, right? And then I'm going to say extends application. It extends a Java application. So this will be a Java FX application. If you remember Java FX. If you don't, this is the time to go study. If you think you can take chances, I, good luck. So add unimplemented methods, and then I add the start method. And then we're going to say primary stage, give the primary stage a title. So set title. <clears throat> and then this is going to be um, mock test one, 2021. That's what I'm gonna call it because that's the mock test. And then I'm going to need to create a scene to set. But then before I create the scene, I need to create evolve, evolve, no, evolve client pane, client pane. And then I'll call this pane and then new evolve client pane to call the constructor. And then I create a scene because there needs to be a scene is equals to new scene which takes in that pain since the, the this the pain is already this give, give specified its size right there's the size the scene will adjust itself to to the size of the pain and then i'm going to say primary stage dot set scene to set the scene for our javafx application then we need to show the Java, the, that GUI. And then here we need to launch it. We pass the command line arguments. So before we launch, I need to set the run configurations. So this is going to run client pane. We're gonna get this error runtime components are missing, blah, 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 which is fine. Remember we created those string substitutions, right? So I'm gonna click on run at the top. So run, go to run configurations. So how should it run it? We need to create the, the virtual machine arguments for that. So I'm gonna come here and say the module path to set where, where should it find the modules. And then to get to get the value of a string, you put the, the dollar sign followed by Kelly braces. 
and then followed by the, the string that you've created within the Kelly braces like that. And then I also need to add the modules, add modules, and then dollar sign Kelly braces. I've called it Java FX uh, modules, closing Kelly braces. And then apply and then run. We should see our pane. So there's our GUI, right? Our application. And as you can see, it's same color, everything, because I'm just taking from this. And it's the same si size and everything. So close. Then now we can add all the extra things like your labels, your buttons and stuff. So let's go to Evolve, Evolve Client Pane. So I'm going to put comments here to say, OK, let's um, set. So how, how am I going to structure this thing? Um, let's say here now I'm setting. So here I'm setting, set the labels for name and okay, I don't need to do this is extra. I'll, I'll just, this is too much, too many comments. So I'll just say, say I'll just put the one thing at a time, uh, create the label. Let me just say, create the label for name. So I'm going to create a new label. I'm going to call it LBL prefix with LBL to remember that this is a label. LBL name is equals to new label. And what text will it take in? I've called it enter your name. That's what I've called it in my design when I was designing and preparing. Make sure you choose the right thing. I talked about this last semester. It's not AWT, it's Java FX. Make sure you import the right one. You're also going to face serious issues and you won't know how to fix them. So there's my label. So I need to check, since I'm using anchor pane, there's this thing called layout X and layout Y. Basically the X and Y coordinates of that thing on the anchor pane. So I need to also set those. So before we set those, I need to and there's a lot of things that I need to say. Remember, the, the color needs to be white. Text fill needs to be white. So there's a lot of things that are involved. So the first thing that I need to set is let me see. I did create the label. That's fine. Yeah. Now I can set the text size. I don't know if it's called text size. Yeah, I forgot what it's called. I think it's called. Is it text text size? Yeah, I think I'll just I'll figure it out when I see it. But then you remember every time you create a, a, a something that to 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 be added on the pane, you need to add it onto the pane. So since it's part of the pane, we call like I said the 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 anchor pane, which is it behaves as the root node. That means everything on it is called a child. It's a child. It's a descendant. So anchor pane is like it's like as the parent of base class. Anything, whether it's a label or a button, we call that a child. So you can call the get children list with the method to get the children and then call the add method to add that child as part of the children. So this is inside of my super class. Remember, you remember this is super just for me. You can omit this and just call, call set style. That's fine. I'm just putting it there so that you know that it's from the base class, the super class. So I'm going to call get children which returns an observable list. And then I call the add method to add a node, which is to add that label. So now here I add label, because if I don't add it, it won't show. Add label to anchor pane or to my pane, right? I need to add as part of, as part of its children or else it's not gonna know. So there's the label. So, so far we haven't set a lot of things. So if I run it again, the label, might not even have the profile, proper color and position. You see, it's black, it's on the corner. They shouldn't be in the corner. It should be somewhere here and it should be a bit bigger. We set all of those properties one at a time. So that label is referenced through this name. This is the object's name. Remember, this is an object because it has been allocated on the heap. So I'm going to check the properties. So the text fill, you see it's called text fill. So you, you you set it via set style, right? So via styling sheet. So I'm gonna say LBL name dot set style, and then 
I'm going to say FX text fill, right? To say what text color should it be? What should it fill? What color should it fill it in with? So text fill hexadecimal value two, four, six. Six Fs, which is going to be white. And then if I run it again, let me run it again. You see now the color is white. Okay, now I'm running two GUIs. See, the color is white. One thing at a time. I haven't set the text size yet. I, I think I forgot what it's called. Let me see, text fill. I forgot what it's called. I don't, I'm not sure if it's called text size or what. So to, to set multiple things, to set multiple things um, in, in the style, right? You put a semicolon to say, this is where that style ends. Now I'm about to style some style in adds an extra style. And then FX, um, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's called text. Is it text? What is it? What's the other? What's the proper name? I don't think it's called text size to set the size. I think it could be font size. We'll see. We'll test. It's either text size or font size. So remember we said it's 15 PX, right? 15 pixels. I think it's FX font size. Yeah, I think it's font size. So if it's eight or oh, it's 18 px, 18, 18, 18 pixels. So 18 px. Okay, this thing takes its time to run. So let's just wait a bit. Yeah, it's not text size. I think it's font size. That's the proper name. Yeah, so it's called font size. So it's fine. Everything is fine. I've created it. Now I need to set its position, the layout X and layout Y which is sort of like X and Y coordinate for that label. Since I'm using anchor pane, you need to set them. For you, if you're using like grid pane or whatever, then it was gonna set those. And you can also set the preferred width and height. You see, if all these properties, I'm getting them from here. There's layout X and layout Y. So let me set the preferred width to 154. So my label dot set preferred width to 154 right that's the preferred width and then the height or preferred height let me just check it's 25. so that's that's how i get to have a beautiful GUI, GUI application it's 54 right if i'm not mistaken so set preferred height there's another method called set set where it takes in both the width and the height I'll show you the other method. So I think this is 54, 25, I mean. Is it, yeah, I think it's 25. Why am I saying 54? It's 25. And then the last two things I need to set is X and Y, which is the position in my anchor pane, the X and Y coordinates. So I'm gonna call set layout X, it's 31 and 35, right? No, 31 and 15. So 31 and 15, so my label, and you see that I'm referring to my label LPL, then set layout X. Um, now I forgot the coordinates. The way I'm just forgetting so quick, it's 31, 15, 31.0D. You don't have to put the 0D. You can just even put 31, that's fine. I just like to use all the Java uh, to, uh, the, I just like to do all the things that are possible with Java. So layout, this will be 15.0D. And then if I run it again now, you see that it, this position would have shifted. You see, it's starting to look like this. So we need to keep doing that for all the inputs, which is gonna be a lot of code. But then it won't be, a, you only have to think about the code. You have the measurements. You see these measurements, 154, 31, all of these measurements, I have them. So it's not gonna be a problem for me. So I'm gonna cut this, and then I'm gonna edit here. Yeah, we are done with the label, right? And then I can, it's up to you in what order you wanna create them, it really doesn't matter. So I'll get, go to the next label. And remember the preferred width and height is different for each. And the X, layout X and layout Y is different for each. So I need to make sure I take that into account. I don't just copy and paste. So here I'll say create the label for password, right? To enter the, to, to display that, enter your password. 
So label LBL password is equals to new label. And then I provide the text on that label. The text would be enter your password colon. Then at the end of the day, I need to not forget to add label. Yeah, let me show you what, what happens when you forget to add the label. So I'm going to comment this out, basically not add the label to my GUI. And then you see that the it's going to run, right? Everything fine, but then you won't see the label. Why? Because you didn't, you forgot the code. So as far as it concerned, anchor pane is no children. So you need to add the children and say, this is one of the children so that it knows to display that label or that text field or that text area or that button. So add label for, okay, no. No, add label, yeah, that's fine. Add label to anchor pane or to my GUI, whatever you want to phrase it. So same, the, you can get, there's a, a, another method, right, called all, called add all, I mean, called add all, which which, which you add all the labels and in, in that order. So I can say add LBL password and then comma, also add LBL name. It doesn't matter whatever you, way you want to do it. Me, I'm doing it in this way, adding one by one. That's totally up to you. So since I'm adding one child, I'm gonna call the add one, I'm gonna call the add function which only adds one child. If you wanted to add multiple children, you'd add them, or multiple thing GUI elements, you'd add them. That's up to you. And then I know that I'm gonna have the same style for this because the labels are the same, right? Remember the labels are the same. They're the same size. So I'm gonna say lbl.set style like this to set the style to make things fast for me. So I've set the style and then now I need to set the preferred width and the preferred height. I'm gonna use the different technique where it combines these two things. You call a method that takes those two things as parameters. The first one will be the width, the second one being the height. So let me check the width and the height. It's 186.25. So 186.25, so LBL password, um, it's called set what? Set preferred size, yeah, set pref size, that's what it's called. You see, instead of writing those two lines, I can write it in one line. So set preferred size, starting with, um, I think it's 128.25, 25. I think that's, those are the measurements, right? 186, yeah, my memory sucks. 186.25. So you can set you can set it in one line or you can set it in two lines separate. That's up to you. From now on, I just use pre set pref size. You see, because there's less code. But then in terms of layout x and layout y, you can't combine them into one function. There's no one function. You have to call them separate. There's no set layout whereby you pass in x and y. No. You have to call them separate. So my memory sucks. So 3156. 3156. Dot set. This would be 31. Then LBL. Do you know why? What happens if you don't set the X and Y position? It's going to be in a in a random location. That's not what I want. That means my GUI won't look nice. See, now I forgot the other size. 3156. 56 so i'm gonna comment this out right to show you what happens if you run it without setting the x and y locations since i'm using anchor pane i need to set them you see the password is is now on the top because, because it always adds it to that top i don't want that i need to set the layout x and layout y which is the x and y coordinates because remember this is technically a cartesian plane so you see Everything is the right way because I did plan it on the side. I know the measurements. So I'm done with my label, done. Now move on to the next one, which is the text fields. So I'm doing one thing at a time. So create the name text field, which is the text field class or text field. I'll call it txt name. I'm prefixing your txt to remember that this is a text field. It goes to new um, text field, and then 
you can set prompt text, right? Remember, there's many ways you can the prompt text, which is text that will the, the the remember to import the right one, Java FX. So there's this thing called set prompt text. Let me show you. I can come here and say so I can remove the label. That's a that's that's an option. It's optional. The labels are optional. I can remove the label and just use the prompt text feature. So prompt text is great text, which shows which tells the user what to enter into this text field. You can do it in that way also. You can say enter your password as prompt text, not actual text. Text is actual text. We don't want that. So when I press enter, you see it's grayed out. Enter your password. Enter your, 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 your name, I mean, and then this will be enter your password. So you can omit the labels. You can delete the labels. That's fine. So this is there's two ways you can approach it. You can remove this and then stretch this out and then just put a prompt text. That's perfectly fine. There's many ways you can kill a cat. There's many ways you can approach it. So I can literally just delete these labels and just use prompt text. That's totally fine. But then I think, yeah, I think prompt text is cool. So let me just delete that top label and see whether it's going to look a bit cooler. Yeah, it looks a bit cool. But then I'd like to stick with what I already have going on. So let me stick with what I already have. So I'm displaying this one, the, the TXT name, the text field for the name. So I need to set it font size to 15 px so i need to set its font size before i do that i, I always forget to add the, the things the, the text fields and the labels to the pane so that's why i'm always adding it before making changes to the text field so add text field um let me just call it, say add txt name to my gui so that I can be able to see it. So, so my user can be able, to, the client can able to, to can be able to see it. So I get the children, and then I I add this as one of the children for my GUI. And then the text field. Now I need to, I can you can also set prompt text again, even though despite there's a label, you can do that. No one's stopping you. So I need to style it. So remember when you set the font size, we need to call the style method, and then pass it this way, followed by the font size. So this label needs to be 15px. So txt name dot set style, and then minus fx minus font size, and then size is 15 pixels. And then the text color is fine. The text fill it's fine. I'll leave it as black. That's fine. I don't want to add too many colors. So now we are done. I need to find the X and Y, the layout X and the layout. OK, and the width. Because by default, remember, the, the text fields have their own default width and height. So I need to also set the, the preferred one, the one that I want, because I want my design to look exactly this way. So 553, that's dot set. OK, so I remember we said we use pref preferred size to pass in um, both. So I don't know if it was, was it 150? No, 553. 553. 0D and 32 is the height. So 32.0D, which says this this would be my um, my width, this would be the height. So I have the width and the height set. Now I need to set the position with coordinate. Layout x 228. So txt name dot set layout x 228. I keep making mistakes. I don't know if I'm right. 228, yeah. And then 11 is the other one. Like 11 from Stranger Things. Layout 11. If you don't know 11, that's that's not really a, something you should worry about. I was just saying 11, just reminding me of 11 from Stranger Things. So we also need to do the same thing for the other text field. You see that the, the, the size is the same, the width and the height, because it's the same labels, same text fields, I mean. 
And then here I need to create the password text field. Right, and then text field txt password is equals to new text field. And then we add the text field to our GUI to pane or client pane. So super.getchildren dot add I'm adding txt password txt name I've already added it so I know it's going to be pretty much the same thing so I'm going to copy that and then paste but then be very careful when you copy it and paste I need to refer to this text field <laughs> excuse me uh, and then I'm going to have this uh, yeah, so now remember the preferred size, they're the same size, all of them, the text fields and the font size, all of them are exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the X and Y coordinates where they currently are on the anchor pane. So it's 2, 2, 228.52. So it's 228.52. It's the same X coordinate, but then Y is different. Yeah, because remember, you can view it in terms of the Cartesian plane. As, as, as you can see, it's the same X coordinate, you see, and the same coordinate, but then Y is different, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So there it is, it's fine. Now we need to add our button. So I'm going to add it in that right, in that order. I'm going to add in that specific order. So I have all these things. So we can test it out now to see if it's actually do we have so what do we have so far. You see, everything is aligned. Everything is perfect. So we need to add the buttons and add all the other extra things. So we still have a long chain. So let me see how far the recording is. Okay. It doesn't show the time. So I think I'll just stop when I'm done creating this GUI, right? So for the button, I need to create a new button. It's called, it's a login button. So I need to create a login button. And then I'll give it a proper name. If you notice that I, I always prefix with what that type of thing is. TXT for text fields. BTN is the prefix if it's a button. For, in my case, to remember, so that I remember which one is the text field, which one is the button. So this will be button. BTN login, go to new button, and then the text from the button will be login. And then remember, it should be number one login so that the user knows in what order to click the buttons. Import the right one, Java FX, and then add login button to my pane. So super.getchildren dot add node which is the button btn login and then the bt the button is also at a specific x and y coordinate and there's a specific width and background color all of those things we need to set them so i'm going to start by setting the preferred width and height 751.39 so btn login Uh, which is going to be 759 and I forgot the other one now. 751 and 39. I don't know what's going on with my brain. 751 and 39. Right, so 751 and 39. And then I set the X and Y, which is 31 and 96. Layout X is 31. And then layout Y is, okay, layout Y is 56, right? 96, see. My brain is very bad with numbers. So 31, 96. So we have the X and Y position, right? But then we still don't have the right color. 
you can test it out by running. You see that it's not the right color yet. We need to set the style, you see. The button is fine, but then that's not the color that we're looking for or the, the one that we use when we're planning. So I'm gonna say my button dot set its style using style sheets, right? Give it a style, whether that's the font size. I think the font size, I think I, I did increase, yeah. I also need to set the font size. So let's see. So under properties, that's where I should find. So font size is 15 PX, text fill is white. So there's quite a lot of things that I'm gonna, and the background color. So there's quite a lot of things that I need to set. So text fill would be what the text color, the color text, which is going to be white, six Fs, two, four, six. Semicolon to say that's the end of this one. And then I'm going to set the other, the other one, right? So minus FX, then font, size is 15 px pixels when i'm sticking and then semicolon because i'm going to add another styling and then plus always don't forget to put the semicolon if you forget to put semicolon it's going to think it's still continuing it's one thing it's like the semicolon in java to say that that terminate that statement it's like a full stop in english so fx background color basically the color for my button background color Remember, if it's hexadecimal format, you need to add the hash and then hash symbol. And then I'm going to copy that color, copy it, then put it there. That's my color, no spaces, and then done. So now you should have the color and the size and the everything. See, there it is. I can click it, everything is fine. And then that's pretty much the first button. And then after that, I think we need an, we needed another button, right? Yeah. So it's going to be pretty much the same as this button with slight to the slight variation, right? So yeah, this is why you shouldn't copy and paste. It's fine. Let me just write it. So create a get list of images button to get the list of images. That's what that button is for. So BTN, I'll call it get list. This goes to new button. And then I'm gonna name it get list of images because it gets the list of images. Before I forget, since I always forget, so add get list of images button to my pane as one of the children. So super dot get children dot add node uh, btn get list and then i've added the button i know it's going to take the same style so i'm going to copy and paste that style so btn get list dot set style right there's the style and then i'm just going to copy this whole string here there we go, because it has the same style. All the buttons have the same style. You could just copy and paste and then rename, but then you might forget to rename and then you see that your things are not the way you expected them to be. So the preferred size should be the same for all of them. So btn get list dot, dot um, set preferred size. 172, I think they are the same, yeah. They're all the same size. Yeah, they're all the same. So they're the same width and height, so that's fine. And then I need to set my layout X and layout Y. So let's see what's the layout X and layout Y. Layout X is 31. So btn get list dot set layout x 31 and then 144 is the other one get list dot set layout y 144 and then that's fine the button should be fine 
So there's the button. <clears throat> so that's fine. We can move on to the next, right? So we can move on to the next thing, which is those labels and the text area. This is a text, this is a called text area. Text area. So I'm gonna add these two labels again. So I'm gonna add a list of images label. So label LBL list. I'm just gonna call it LBL list. It's goes to new label. And then I'm gonna give it the text or the list of images. And then if I forget add label, add list of images label to my pane because I tend to forget to add them. So I'm going to just add them before changing them. L LBL list done. And then this list I know is gonna take some style, some styling from other lists, right? Which is the this, this styling over here. The preferred width and size are gonna change obviously. But then the styling, the color and all those things, I know they're gonna remain the same. So that's how I took that um, style. And then I need to click on it to get more details like the width and the height. So the width is 135. So it's 135.25. So LBL list dot set prefer size 135.25. Dot 0D for double. And then 135.25, that's fine. And then my X and Y position is, its, it's X and Y position is 31. 191 31 191 dot 0 d so so far so good that's that's all we have to put then we create the text area or you can create the next label it doesn't matter what order you create them i can go to this label create that label then i go to the text areas that's fine so i'll go to the label it didn't matter in what order i put it so create i was supposed to say create here create um server response label and then i'm going to say label label lbl server response because it's my it's my label for my server response new label and then i'm gonna give it the text server response and then i need to add my server response label to my pane or to my gui right and then i'm gonna say lbl server no super dot get children then call the add method to add the child server response done then now i need to set it needs to have the same style because remember they all have the same style so i'm gonna copy this and then dot set style I've set the style for that label. And then I set the preferred size, which is the width and height. So let me check the width and height. Um, 148.25. So, no, set size. Dot set preferred size which is going to be 148 and 148 and what? 25, 25.0D. 
and then my x and y coordinates that's a very far x value so 633 that's x dot set layout to 633 that's my x coordinate and then 191 is my y so lbl server response the set layout y to 191 and then that's the position right so that's the, we are done with that we set the color we set the text size everything so now i'm left with text area so there's text area and it all of them have a preferred width and an x layout x and a layout y because i chose an anchor anchor pane that's how it positions things as an x and y and uh, things have a width and height which is normal right so so far if i run this you see that it's, it has all the labels excluding the bottom stuff you see at the right positions so now i need to add my text area so create um this is for list of images text area right list of images text area so i'm gonna say text area right and i'm gonna call it um I can't say txt because it's still fine. I can still call it that. Let me say txt um, images. Let me call it txt images. New text area where I'm going to display list of my images. JavaFX and then let's add the list of images text area to my pain or GUI. And then I'm going to say super dot get children dot add node, which is txt images. Then I can give it styling, right? I can style it. So let's see. Let me see. Let me start. Okay, let me just put the width and the height. So 347 to 18. 347 to 18 since I'm, I'm very forgetful so txt images dot set preferred size I want to set both of them in one go so 347.0d to 18.0d so that's the preferred width and height and then x and y is 31 to 24 31 to 2, 4. So txt images dot set layout x, which is 31. Then txt images dot set layout y, which is 2, 2, 4. And then we are done with that. And then I, need, I now need to set the style. It's up to you. I can. I could try and make it fancy and say the text should be pink. I could do that. That's uh, that's totally up to you. You could set the text field to be pink, to display the images in pink, but then that's not really necessary. I'm just gonna, in, obviously I need to increase the text size. So yeah, 15, 15 is decent, yeah. I need to set the style to 15 px which is the font size so the only thing that i need to set is the font size so txt images dot set style which is going to be minus fx font size which is going to be 15 pixels or 15 px and then i'm done creating it it's going to be placed in the right location and everything i trust myself because i just create i use scene builder so i'm 100% sure those are the right x and y values. So now I need to create a server response text area. So a text area for my server response. So txt um, server response 
yeah i'm going it's going to be a long name or oh, i call it lbls it's okay yeah so um, it's going to be a long name but then i'll it's just to help you understand when i'm coding so that you don't have to think about what does what is this label or this text area for it's even written txt server response for my server response and then add the server response text area to my pane which is going to be super dot get children dot add node txt server response so there's my my text area named txt server response i've added it to, to my gui but then i need to set the width and the height and the font size to 15 px so let's set the size as 356 356 to 18 right that's the width and the height. So let's set that. So txt server response dot set preferred size, which is 356.0d to 118.0d. Then the next one is the layout x and layout y. 425 to 24. 425 224 which is x and y yeah in that order so txt server response dot set layout x to 425.0d txt server uh, response dot set layout y to 224.0d and then delete that and then the last thing that I need to set is the font size. So txt server response dot set uh, style and then minus fx minus and then font size is 15 pixels, 15 px. So now we are almost there. So there it is. This is what we have now. We've set up everything up until there. Then we can add extra th the last few things now. So what's the next thing? Is the label. So this is going to be create um, enter ID label, right? And then I need to add enter ID label to my pane so let's create the label label lbl um id right for the id this goes to new label and then i'm going to say enter what is it what did i call it enter image id or the file id okay enter the file id that's what i called it and then i need to add it to my GUI before I forget dot get children dot add LBL ID. That's fine. And then now the styling, I need to go and copy the styling from there. Because all the labels have the same styling. Same applies to text fields. Because I just copied and pasted to save time. So that means all of them have that same styling. So I've set the styling, I've set the, the, now I need to set the X width, I need to set the width and height, 148.25, 148.25, LBL ID dot set, pref size, preferred size, which is 148 wide and then 25 pixels high or height. And then I need my X and Y coordinate 34, 454, 34, 454. So LBL ID dot set layout X to 34. And then LBL ID dot set layout Y to 454 dot zero D. 
and then that's pretty much all I need to do there. Yeah, that's pretty much what I need to do. Then now we move to this text field. Yeah, that's everything. And then text field. Um, it's also it also should be the same size, right? Fifteen px. Yeah, the font size. So I need to create a text field for getting the ID, right? For entering the ID. So I'm gonna create enter ID text. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm gonna create a enter ID text field. So text field txt id right new text field and then before we forget add enter id text field so super my base classes method called get, get children call the add method to add that node which is the txt id and then for my text field, I know that the styling is also the same. So let me look for the styling. OK, that is only the font size, so that's fine. I can just type that down. So txtid.set style um, fx uh, font size is equals to 15 pixels of 15 px. And then 553 32. 553 32. That's the width and height. So txtid.set preferred size, which is 533.0d, 32.0d. And then we have the preferred size and everything. And then I'm going to have um, layout X and layout Y, 228,451, 228,451. So txtid.set layout X to 2280. Then txtid.set layout Y to be 451.0D. <clears throat> And then that's pretty much all you need to do for this text field. Then now I need to add an extra two buttons. So what I'm going to do, is, since I don't want to waste too much time, I'll copy and paste this code, right? I just, you shouldn't do this, not a, it's not advised. So for the, for the BTN get list, I forgot to put a number there to say number two. And then don't I have an extra button? Okay, no, I don't have an extra button. So I'm gonna have this. Um, uh, okay. I forgot how to auto align. How do you auto align here? Yeah. Not quick. I don't want. I don't want an outline. Uh, there should be something here. Okay, let me say reflect and see. Okay. Nah, it's not it. I totally forgot how to auto align. But then that's fine. Since I forgot how to outline, I won't waste my time. I'll just copy this, the styling only. I just, I just have to create the button from scratch. I have no choice. So this will be the get image button, right? So get image, which gets the image. So button btn get image. This goes to new button. And then this is number three in the sequence of buttons to be clicked and it's called get image. And then I need to add the get image button to my pane or my GUI. And then I'm going to say super.getchildren.add 
btn get image and then btn get image i'm gonna set its styling let's set style to be this styling which is the same for all buttons and then that's the style and then we need to set the width and the height so this button 750 751 Oh yeah, the width and the height are the same for all the buttons. So where's that button? Yeah, so I'm just gonna copy this and not waste time typing it. So btn get image dot set preferred size. That's the size. And then the X and Y are different. 31,497, 31,497. So btn get image dot set layout x to be 31 dot zero and then btn get image dot set layout y to be 497.0d and then that's it. Let me see, did I Put in the background color for the image okay, for the button. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, and then now I need to add another button. How come this thing is refusing to? Okay, yeah, I didn't want the spaces. <coughs> Excuse me. So I need to create a display image, right? So this is display image. So this will be called btn display image info to make things simpler. And then copy, paste. Copying and pasting is not always good. That's why I avoid it because you see, I could have forgotten this text to say here display image to display my image and then yeah what else is missing oh yeah the x and y the layout x and y so i need to click on the button to find the actual x and y it's 31 and 547 31 and 547 and then we are done that's the full gui so when i run it you should see everything so there's the full GUI. So when this but display button is clicked, it should redirect to another GUI. It should open up another GUI and show us an image. And you'll see we'll do that. that. That's not going to be an issue. But then I'm going to have to create it, create a separate class for that. So we have to do we're gonna have to design it again. Design make another design. So now we need to write the functionality for these buttons. The login, get a list of images, which gets a list of images from the file, right? So basically this is, we are reading a file here using a scanner because we're reading a text file. And then I think I should pause here. So see you in part two.